In a previous video, I showed you how to create a simple Class AB audio amplifier that consists of any 5534 amp amp and a push-pull bipolar junction transistor output stage. Now, even though the circuit did work decently, there was one problem. It's power loss. We can identify its cause by taking a look at the simplified functional block diagram. Firstly, our originally applied audio signal gets its voltage amplified by an op amp. Since such op amps can only supply very little power, the next part of the circuit is a BJT output stage that modulates the supply voltage of 12 volts to become the audio signal that is not only voltage amplified, but can also supply sufficient current for the speaker. The only problem is that the transistors work in the active region which means there exists a noticeable voltage drop across the collector emitter path and thus power loss is created, which leads to an overall efficiency of around 50 to 60 percent. To increase this efficiency though, we can utilize another audio amp kind, a class D amp to be precise, with an efficiency of up to 95 percent. So in this video, I will show you how such an audio amp works and how we can create our own DIY version, which consists of common components. Let's get started. First off, let's have a look at the simplified functional block diagram of a Class D amp. On the left side, we got our audio signal, which is connected to the non-inverting input of a comparator. The inverting input, however, gets connected to a triangle wave with a frequency of above 200 kHz. Now, whenever the voltage of our audio signal is higher than the triangle voltage, the output of the comparator gets pulled high and vice versa. This way, we basically modulated our audio signal with maximum frequencies of around 20 kHz into a high frequency square wave, which then connects to a MOSFET driver. The driver obviously turns on and off two MOSFETs, the high side one according to the high voltage levels and the low side one according to the low voltage levels. This way, we get a powerful high frequency square wave at the MOSFET's output which, since the MOSFETs were switched on and off in their ohmic region with a low drain to source voltage drop, created very little power losses. Now we can recreate the original audio signal by adding an LC low pass filter, which, like the name implies, filters out all the high frequencies and leaves us with our original, now amplified audio signal. As suitable components, we can use a 555 timer, a LM393, a 74HC04 to create an inverted signal of the high frequency square wave, which is mandatory for the IR2113 MOSFET driver, and two IRLZ44N MOSFETs. Before we can solder a proper circuit though, I utilized the free EZEDA circuit design software to create an appropriate schematic. By utilizing the online component library, I imported all the required ICs and passive components and afterwards connected them all to one another according to the previously discussed functional block diagram. The only question left to answer was what kind of values should be used for the LC filter. According to a commercial class D amp that I had lying around, inductances of 22 microhenry should be suitable. The only inductors I had lying around though were 33 microhenry ones. So I connected two of them in parallel in order to create a 16.5 microhenry value and wrote down the two formulas to calculate the inductance and capacity of a LC low pass filter. If we rearrange the inductor formula and insert the load impedance of 4 ohms according to the speaker properties, and the inductance of 16.5 microhenry, we can calculate a cutoff frequency of around 40 kHz, at which the original voltage amplitude will be lowered by 3 dB, or 30% of the original amplitude. By inserting this frequency into the capacitor formula, we get a capacitance of around 1.03 microfarads which I created by connecting five 0.22 microfarad capacitors in parallel. 
And now that the schematic was complete, I gathered all the required components and started soldering them to a piece of perf board. As always, I tried to utilize silver copper wire for the most part, but still had to use a bit of hookup wire at the end. And of course, you can find reference pictures of my perf board layout as well as the schematic for this project in the video description. After 3 hours of soldering, the circuit was complete and it was time to insert all the ICs, connect a 15V power supply to the input and a speaker to the output. As a first test, I hooked up my function generator set to a sine wave with a frequency of only 1Hz to the audio input. Since the 555 timer creates a triangle voltage between around 1 third and 2 thirds of the supply voltage, we also have to use a potentiometer to add a DC offset to the sine wave so that it is completely submerged inside the triangle wave. If we now take a look at the output of the comparator, we can see how the slowly changing 1 Hz sine wave creates the modulated high frequency square wave. And if we increase the frequency to a value that is closer to proper music, the output definitely looks crazy and confusing, but the theory pretty much stays the same. But by using lower frequencies, we can actually create a lot of visible vibrations of the speaker cone, which showcases that this class D amp is pretty damn powerful for its simplicity. And as you would have expected it, by increasing the frequency of the sine wave, we produce higher tones, which means that the amp works without a problem. So I replaced the function generator with my smartphone and tested the music playback capabilities of the amp. As you can hear, the music playback also worked like a charm, but the volume was a bit low. The reason for that was that the music signal only features a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of around half a volt while the function generator easily created peak-to-peak -peak voltages of 4 volts. So as an afterthought, I added an LM386 op amp in between the input audio signal and the comparator, which didn't even require complementary components. Afterwards, the audio signal consisted of a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 4 volts as well, which was suitable to create a much louder playback of the music through the Class D audio amp. Now of course, this circuit is definitely not perfect, however the audio quality is pretty decent and more importantly, maybe you learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time.